And now we will turn to the next presenter. Do it? Okay, no great. Okay, thanks. Um, and so now we'll move from Latin America to Africa. And we'll invite Dr. Grosbeck Parham to um, speak to us about the experience in Africa with deploying HPV based DNA testing. Grosbeck? Good afternoon. <clears throat> well, after that talk, I'm not sure I really have much to say about the continent of Africa relative to deploying H HPV based interventions. But we have great hope. Um, so I'm going to approach this talk a little differently than um, my two predecessors by asking questions. Because as I said, the continent of Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, that part um, represents the epicenter of cervical cancer in terms of incidence and mortality rates. <clears throat> Part of that is driven by the high prevalence of HIV, which as you know is a big risk factor for um, uh, cervical cancer, precancer, HPV infection. <clears throat> Just to give you an example, um, the last, I did a, recently did a survey of the countries in Africa that had national cervical cancer strategic, st strategic plans, and I could come up with only four or five, Rwanda, uh, Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya, um, and we just had our first meeting to develop one in Zambia, and my understanding from talking to Lynette Denny down in South Africa, they have yet to develop a national cervical cancer strategic plan. So we have a ways to go. However, um, my questions are, is Africa ready for HPV-based interventions? And are HPV-based interventions ready for Africa? <laughs> <clears throat> and I want this to be sort of thought-provoking, because I think because we are near <clears throat> ground zero when it comes to HPV based testing, uh, we have a chance to really accelerate uh, and get past a lot of the barriers that maybe other countries have uh, had to deal with. If we can ask the right questions and deliver the right answers and put the right infrastructures in place in order to implement. So we have, th thanks to our great colleague Lynette Denny, down in South Africa, we have the evidence that um, HPV-based cervical cancer screening <clears throat> combined with uh, cryotherapy is very efficacious in preventing uh, CIN2 and greater in populations of HIV, neg HIV negative and uh, HIV positive populations, about 80% over three years in HIV positive populations and 69% in HIV uh, negative populations. So we have the evidence. <clears throat> the question is, if we try to <clears throat> implement this form of screening, um, what, what are the issues as it relates to stigma? Um, Africa has been um, suffering from this, this HIV pandemic, and that disease is mostly heterosexual on the continent. And so there's a tremendous amount of stigma around HIV and any other type of sexually transmitted uh, disease. <clears throat> and so how, how, the question is, how, how do we deal with that in terms of trying to educate lay people do we talk about this as a, uh, a, a, a disease, a, as a test that's going to detect a sexually transmitted virus? Or do we talk about it as a, as a test that detects um, something that suggests that there may be a cancer or a precancer? Do we even deal with the whole issue of cancer? How do we deal with that on the ground in terms of educating people? What do we say about the test? Um, and in terms of our providers, do we have enough people who are trained? Do we have enough providers who are going to be available? This is a very sensitive test, so it's going to pick up more disease than VIA. 
Um, we're going to have its, its specificity is not the greatest in the world, but the sensitivity is great. So we we'll end up with a significant number of percentage of women. We don't know yet what percentage on the continent, in different parts of the continent, and different subpopulations, who will end up testing HPV positive but won't have any lesions. How do we deal with those? Uh, can we task shift more? Uh, of these, can we shift more of the task from physicians and nurses even going further across to community health workers um, who can perform clinical based uh, HPV testing? How do we think women in, on the, in different parts of the continent will accept this whole issue of self testing? I think from my eight year experience in Zambia, it would go very well there because women in general have a tendency to uh, engage in, in vaginal cleansing with their fingers. And so I don't, I don't think it would be a, a problem in terms of self-testing, but in other cultures it may, it may be uh, a problem. So will, will one uh, size fit all? And again, do we have enough people trained? What about the infrastructure? I heard uh, Jose Geronimo say this morning in another conference that to try to start implementing uh, an HPV-based cervical cancer screening program without a pre-existing VIA-based VIA platform is asking for trouble because you don't have the uh, health care providers trained, you don't have the referral systems, you haven't done the advocacy, you haven't done the recruitment. <clears throat> and so to just all of a sudden say we're going to start doing HPV based screening without a VIA-based platform may be, may, may, may be asking for failure. It may not, dep depending on if we can ask the right questions in the right way. <clears throat> there are VIA-based screenings going on spottedly across uh, the African continent, but I would probably say you know, probably only in about one-fourth to one-third of the countries. I think we, we are in good stead in Zambia because of our very robust VIA-based platform. What about diagnostics? Um, when patients turn out to be HPV positive, are, are we going to be able to uh, provide colposcopy for all of these places? Colposcopes are fifteen to $20,000 a piece, and it is not easy to learn colposcopy. Is there another form of diagnostics that's cheaper, that's, that's easier to learn? Can we use digital cervicography? Is there something else we can use? Because um, we're talking about a very low resource environment, then we're talking about bringing in a form of diagnostics that's difficult to master even in the Western world. What happens when it breaks? What happens when the bulbs blow out? Uh, again, it's a $15,000 instrument. <clears throat> and what about treatment? Who's going to perform the cryotherapy? Who's going to perform the leaps? And who is going to, what, what type of infrastructure do we have for follow-up? The large numbers of women who may be test HPV positive, but have no lesions, but need to be followed up at some time, particularly if they're HIV positive, or they're in an environment where they can become HIV positive at any point in time. How do we follow them up? Through cell phone? through uh, riding out into these communities that have no addresses, that sometimes disappear after hard rain. People shift all the time. So, so how does this work? Because it does not appear yet, at least to me, that this is a single visit uh, paradigm. Maybe so. Maybe we can find a way to shorten the time between the time we get the results of the test and the time when we can offer uh, the treatment. This is one of the most, one of the beautiful things about VIA. You can link the, the screening with the treatment immediately, but it takes time. Uh, you have to batch so many tests um, um, in, in this H HPV paradigm, paradigm, unless that changes. So those are my questions. Is, red, is Africa ready for HPV interventions? <clears throat> now, are HPV-based interventions ready for Africa? What about the cost? Can we afford it? It's supposed to be a cheap test, but you know, when the rabbit comes out of the hat, it requires a machine. It requires 
Um, and is that, is, it, is, it, is, it, is that technology robust for, for the continent outside of a research environment? Who's going to take care of it? What happens when it breaks down? Uh, are there going to be people placed in, around the continent in different places who can um, provide service? Can, can, uh, can, can service men and service women be trained to uh, uh, fix the machine if it, if it doesn't function? What about the screening age? <clears throat> we know that on the continent of Africa, at least in sub-Saharan Africa, even in HIV negative women, that cervical cancer appears to, and, and, and high-grade precancers appear to occur at a younger age because of early sexual intercourse and maybe some other factors that, of which we don't yet understand. Should we start screening women at age 25 using HPV tests? We know that that's going to increase the number of positives that have no lesions, or will it not? on the continent of Africa. So what is the screening age? How do we manage women who are HPV positive without a lesion? Should we perform what we are calling prophylactic cryotherapy? Is that really the way to get at this disease on the continent? Do we need to be as, as, as aggressive as we can and use what this test gives us? Uh, finding women who are only HPV positive but have no lesion. That may get us as close to va vaccination as we possibly can, particularly in women who are HIV positive, who we know are at risk for either, either having a lesion that we can't visualize with the VIA or developing one uh, in the next two or three years. Maybe, maybe this is where the real success of this, um, of this test lies. Uh, finding those women who are HPV positive without a lesion and aggressively treating them with, with cryotherapy. <clears throat> How many visits are needed? We know from even in our VIA studies when we have to refer patients uh, for electrical excision of a lesion that 40 to 50 percent of them never make it to the referral center. Um, so we need to be able to uh, concentrate um, these, we need to s decrease the number of visits. So, 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 so do we, how, 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 how do we implement this, particularly out in rural areas? Do we use what I would call a camp-based approach where we go out into a rural area and we park a mobile unit for a week and we take a, uh, the HPV testing kit with us and we just screen women and, and get the results and bring them back? Or do we try to use the traditional clinic approach where they come in, drop off the sample or test themselves and then come back in the next day. Do we put it in the mall where we young women or women who are shopping can just come in and take a sample and go shopping and then come back in the afternoon? Uh, who knows what, what works? What about this whole issue of, of HIV? We know that probably 50% or more of HIV positive women, depending on their CD4 count, are going to test HPV positive. Who's going to evaluate all those women? Particularly, what we, again, what are we going to do with those who are HIV positive, HPV positive, but have no lesion? Um, and we know that, this, that HIV can, can increase the rate at which this whole pre-malignancy process occurs. 95 to 98% of women on the continent of Africa, if you ask them, and there's data for this, and we, we have this data from our clinics, if you ask them when they come in for a, a, a screening, have they ever had a pelvic exam in their lives? The answer is no. I don't care if they're 20, I don't care if they're 50, I don't care if they're 60. They have never had a pelvic exam, exam prior to the time they come into the screening clinics. So if you say, we're just going to use this test um, and, and allow women to test themselves. And if they test negative, then we don't see them anymore. They do, they do not get a gynecologic exam. Is that the right thing to do in women who have never had an exam? We know that in about 25% of our patients, we see vulva lesions, we see ovarian masses, we see fibroids. Is that of concern in a, in a public health uh, paradigm such as this? 
Uh, the gynecologic exam is the holy grail of gynecologic care. Uh, or does everybody gyne get a gynecologic exam the first time around, or do they get one despite uh, whether the HPV test is positive or negative? And then we have competing priorities, HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, other uh, non-communicable diseases. So how do we answer these questions and get all of the answers right so that we can roll this out and, and, and make it effective? Uh, <clears throat> the last thing I want to say is I, I asked Franco why in the world did he ask me <clears throat> to try to give a talk on HPV-based <laughs> interventions on the continent of Africa when I have been uh, a devout um, uh, proponent for VIA. And I think he wanted me to stand up on the stage and say that I support HPV-based screening. <laughs> and I do. I think it is the way to go. But I, and I think Zambia is in a perfect place to do it. But I think, and we can train other people. Um, but I think we, we have some, some, we really have some questions we need, we need, we need to get right. Uh, some of them we can get right through studies. Some of them just through conversation. Uh, but I think if we, if we get the questions right, um, we can go forward. And at the end of the day, I think the women will tell us what they want and how they want it, as they always do. Thank you.